So last time we were still talking about these rad radical expressions, and what we realized is that in order to combine or, or simplify these radical expressions, the first thing you have to do is combine them. I told you that really what we, we really never want to do, we never want to simplify the numerator, simplify the denominator, and then combine them because you're going to have to re-simplify it all over again. So I think last time, the last couple examples were combine those radicals first using the quotient rule and then simplify them. Do you guys remember that from yesterday? So when we look at this problem, firstly, can you combine them? Yeah, what tells you you can combine them? The cube root. Good, they're both cube roots. And we, the quotient rule said if you have the same type of root, you can put them under the same fraction, under the same radical. Have one fraction under that radical. Do you remember that? Okay. Also, that 5, is that 5 inside the cube root? No. That 5, what it means, just like the 3 did on one of our previous examples, this means 5 times something. So what we're going to do with our problem here, before we even start it, we're going to take this 5, since it is being multiplied here, we're just going to kind of pull it off to the side and, and hold it there to the end of our problem. Now, is the 5 on the numerator or the denominator? The numerator. What that means is that this is going to be on the numerator for the whole entire problem. Are you with me on that? So we're, it's not going to move to a denominator or anything. The three last time on the example, if you remember from yesterday, that was on the denominator, that stayed on the denominator, and at the very end we had something over three. Here we're going to have five over something. That's, that's our whole idea. So what I'm going to do is this is very much like five times, five over one if you want, five over one, it's on the numerator. five times this radical expression. Now what tells you that you can combine those radicals is that you have the same exact type of root on both the numerator and denominator. If you ever have that, if you ever see this, and you're talking about simplifying radicals, the first thing you need to do, make one radical out of it. Please, please, do not simplify this one first and try to simplify this. You can't even simplify that one. Did you guys see that? Power is less than the root. That three is not a perfect cube. You can't even simplify that. So at some point, you would have to combine them anyway. Do it first, that way you don't waste your time. Up here, you'd simplify this, then you'd combine them, then you'd have to simplify anyway. That would be a tremendous waste of time. And it's hard to do that when I throw negative exponents at you, too, which I'm going to do in just a little bit. Okay, so very first thing we're going to do, we're going to leave this 5 alone five times, and we're going to make this one radical. We're still going to have a cube root. That doesn't change. But inside of our cube root, we're going to have 162 x to the 8th, over 3x squared. Now just if you're okay with that one. Just a little step, right? Just a little step. Make that one root first. Why? Yeah, you, can you can, right? Can you simplify 162 over 3? Yep. Yeah. Do it on a calculator if you haven't already. How much is 162 over 3? How much? 54. 54, okay. Can you simplify x to the 8th over x squared? Yeah. Sure. Hey, exponent rules. That's why we covered those. So if you're looking at this problem, well, I know this 5, I'm, just, I'm leaving it out there. But under my cube root now, without doing any radical simplification, we're able to make this fraction a whole lot better. I know that 162 over 3 is, you guys said 54. Can you tell me, how much is x to the 8 over x squared? What do you do with those exponents? Subtract. And so we're going to get x to the 6. Perfect. Remember that? Subtract the exponent. Now I want you to look at this thing. Can you simplify that? Yep. Is it easier to simplify than this? It's even easier. That's even better. This is what we want to deal with. So I'm going to make a real strong point here. You must combine before you simplify it. I'm going to give you a problem very much like this on the test. The people who, who simplify first probably aren't going to get it right. The people who combine them first, you're definitely going to get it right. Combine it first, then simplify, no big deal. Um, the one I'm going to give you on your test is actually going to have some negative exponents on there. And so you're going to have to know how to deal with that. Um, so make sure you're combining first before you're simplifying. Let's go ahead and finish this off the rest of the way. I'm going to leave that 5 out there still. It's just going to be hanging out 5 times. And then the cube root of 54x to the 6. I haven't lost my cube root the whole way through. You can't lose your cube root. We're going to look for 54. Can you think of a perfect cube that divides 54? 27 2. What was that? 4 is not a perfect cube. 27. 27. Sure, that's perfect cube. So we're looking for those perfect cubes. So remember, on this case, we're not looking for numbers like 9. We're not looking for numbers like 16 or 4. We're looking for perfect cube numbers, which would be 8. 
or 27 or 64. Now there's only two that we have a choice of because 64 is already too big. The only ones you can choose from are 8 and 27. So you need to know what type of root we're dealing with. If it's a cube root, we're looking for perfect cubes. 8's not going to work. 8 doesn't go into 54, but 27 does. Remember 27 as a perfect cube? We just <coughs> cube root of that. So 54, I'm going to write the 27 first times, what is that, 2? And the x to the 6th. <clears throat> I can deal with x to the 6th. How am I going to split up x to the 6th in this particular case? X I could do that, or... X yeah. We break off as many x cubes as we can. Why are we choosing x cubed in this case? Yeah, we know that everywhere we see a power 3 with a cube root, we're going to be able to cross that out and take x out of our radical. Let's go ahead and do that. I want you to notice that I haven't lost the 5. The 5 is still up out here. I haven't done anything with it. That's okay. I've not done a thing with it. You just can't lose it. Don't lose your 5. And don't lose that little 3. Don't lose your index. So we've got the 5 still hanging out. At this point, though, we're going to simplify the rest of our problem. Notice the 5 is right here. What's the cube root of 27? We'll cross out, put a... What's the cube root of 2? Okay, so what am I going to do with that? I circle it, signify it, I'm going to leave that in my cube root. Cube root of x cubed gives me how much? I cross it out, that's x goes outside of a radical. This one, oops, I did the wrong thing. This one also gets crossed out, that gives you an x. Whatever's left circled stays inside of the cube root. Where's your hand feel okay with this so far? Middle row, are you okay with this? Okay. Can I make this any prettier, any better looking? Yeah, just combine no, it's like... That That's five times, right? Five times three. I can make that into 15 x squared. Good, yeah, that's going to be x squared. I certainly don't want to forget that's a cube root. And there's only a two inside. So our answer is 15 x squared cube root of two. Feel okay with this so far? Told you this was fun, huh? Lots of fun. What would you rather be doing on a Thursday, honestly? I mean, nothing really. Not sleeping. He'd rather be dealing with negative exponents, clearly. Clearly. Oh, negative exponents only happens on Friday. I see. Oh my. Oh my. What's different about this problem than the last one? Fourth root. Okay, fourth root, that's one. And then the other one? Yeah, you got negative exponent. Hey, let me tell you something. If you forget what I tell you and you forget to combine these first and you try to simplify the top and simplify the bottom, because that's all I'm going to put on your paper is simplify. And you're going to have to know what to do. So if I put simplify here and you start simplifying this one without combining these first, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make it, unless you realize you have to combine them at some point anyway, but it's going to get pretty confusing if you do that, uh, because you're going to have a lot of stuff going on up here, and then you're going to try to combine that with the stuff down here, the negative exponents, which you, you cannot simplify this in any way right now at all. You're going to be very confused on what to do. Uh, the, the goal of this is to simplify. However, whenever you have the same root or the same root and you were trying to simplify, put them together first. You, you know why? If you looked at the last example, what happened here? was whenever we had the common base, we were able to combine them, right? And change two problems into just one, prob one problem, which was a little bit easier even. That's the whole idea. So instead of dealing with x to the ninth and x to the negative 3, that's a common base. We are going to be able to combine them. Do you guys see it? You're going to be able to combine them somehow. And that's going to be easier to deal with. So that's the whole purpose here in combining your radicals. So whenever you see those, the same root over the same root, yeah, combine them. Now also we've got a 3 up here just like we had the 5. That 3, I'm going to leave it hanging out just like you did the 5 over here. Now is a 3 on the numerator or denominator? Yeah. Notice how the 5, we left that, it was on the numerator, right? This wasn't 1 over 5, this was 5 over 1 the whole way through. 
If the 5 had been on the bottom of my fraction, this would be 1 fifth, and I would be getting this whole thing over 5. Are you with me on that? That would be a 3, and this would be over 5. Let's do the same thing here. So I'm going to start off the same exact way and have a 3 times 4th root of all of this junk. Okay, that's the first step. I gave you the first one. Now, can you please tell me the next step? What would I do now? Combine them. Great. What lets you know that you can combine these? Yeah, the same root. Okay. Same type of root, yeah. If that was a fourth root and that was a third root, you couldn't do anything with it. But fortunately, they're the same root. So we're going to make this. It's going to look identical. The only difference is this thing is not going to be here. You have one big fourth root. So the three is going to stick out front still. Make one big fourth root out of it. One big fourth root. Okay, so on the right hand side of the room, what do I do now? What now? It should be 32x to the 12y to the so we're going to combine them, sure. And we know exponent rules, so this should not be the big deal here. The, the big deal is actually the simplification part. I've already taught you how to do this. I've already taught you how to combine these things as well, right? I've already taught you that. That's old stuff. Okay, so we look at the number first. Of course, there's no constant term over here. So we're going to have just the 32. Now, I am going to deal with with these problems individually. I had the x's, I had the y's. So I'm going to do those piece by piece. Let's please look at the x's first. We've got x to the ninth over x to the negative 3. Now you tell me, what do you do when you have common bases being divided? Do you add exponents or subtract exponents? Yeah, subtract, but it's a negative subtract. Subtract. So when we do it, we, are, we do have the x to the ninth, and we are going to subtract. But be very careful. What are you subtracting? Are you subtracting 3? No. No, because this right here. That will be subtracting 3. That, that way you would get x to the 6th. You with me? Yes. We're actually subtracting negative 3. Now I'm going to draw it a little bigger so you can see it better. This would be subtracting 3. Right now, we're not doing that. We're actually subtracting negative 3. That's like adding 3. So when you are dividing by a negative exponent, you actually add that up there. And you can pretty much see this if you really want to think about it this way. If that's a negative exponent, this means it's in the wrong position. It means it actually belongs up here on this fraction. That would change it to x to the third, positive 3. Does that make sense to you? Then when you combine them, you would see you would get x to the 12th. And that's exactly what we're going to get here is x to the 12th. Does that reasoning make sense to you? Okay, so we're not going to get x to the 6th. You're subtracting a negative. That's x to the 12th. Because of that reason. How about the y? Are we going to get y to the 6 still, or y to the what? Okay, that has a little power of 1, even though we don't show it. It's got a power of 1. So we do the 6 minus 1, that gives you y to the 5th. Now what do you do? Now you have to break apart the 32, so you can get a 4 through. Okay. And we got to do, can we simplify these? What do you think? Well, let you know you can simplify these. Okay, so the power is bigger than that root, we can do that. 